Today marks a pivotal moment as we converge to celebrate excellence in procurement and to explore the latest trends, innovations and best practices in procurement of our industry. This gathering is a testament to our collective commitment to excellence, innovation, resilience in the face of evolving challenges. And throughout the day, you will have the opportunity to engage in insightful discussions, network with peers, and gain new perspectives that will drive your procurement strategies forward. And I invite you to immerse yourself in the enriching experience, connect with industry peers, and glean valuable insights with the Propel and our organizations towards sustained success. Thank you for joining us on the journey of inspiration, collaboration, and recognition. So everyone, are we good to go? Shall we start? OK. So we have uh, lined up spectacular top-notch speakers for you all who are going to share their insights, their knowledge with us today. So with this, uh, I would like to introduce our first speaker of the day. The topic will be role and impact of exim policy on procurement. The speaker will be Mr. Ajay Singh, Vice President, Supply Chain Management, Hindustan Platinum. So let me give a small intro about him. Mr. Ajay Singh is a distinguished procurement business leader with an impressive track record spanning over 30 years. Throughout his career, he has exhibited prowess in developing, structuring, operating, and delivering multifunctional tactical and strategic assignments predominantly in supply chain management. So with this, can we have Mr. Ajay Singh, Vice President, Supply Chain Management, Hindustan Platinum, over the stage, and can we give them a huge round of applause? As I mentioned before, we have top-notch speakers present today here to share the knowledge. So sir, over to you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning to all of you. I think it's nice to have here in Delhi and uh, uh, with large audience sitting over here and the topic I think uh, is procure connect uh, for future ready references I think uh, I'll be talking the uh, on the subject uh, which will be uh, for us to take it forward in the future readiness like we are uh, doing it on day in day out all our procurement uh, work so let us see that what will be coming in the next future that how we can align with the strategic decisions for the organization through the strategies. A uh, little bit of me, I think already introdu introduction has been given, so I'll not go much of a detail out of it. Uh, not working. Yeah. So I'll be uh, speaking on this topic of role and impact of exim policy on procurement. Uh, so uh, let, let us go more on the on the topic. Uh, I think it's not working properly. Uh, yeah. Just bear with me for a minute. I think there are some issues here. Uh, Uh, on the exim policies on the procurement uh, basically uh, why it is required because let us go to the basic uh, of the of the topic uh, why the exim policies are uh, basically it is uh, is there uh, it has been imposed uh, by government plan to help a country on a, a different uh, perspective of uh, with the international trade that is what we, we largely understand. Uh, it also includes the rules and uh, the benefit uh, for things for like import and export, that how the trade, trade balances can be done uh, as, a, as, a, as a country. So that is part of the government policies on the exim. 
and these policies are made to make uh, trade easier because in this context there are a lot of uh, pre trade agreements lot of other policies are being imposed are being there from the government part of it which really really uh, ease uh, to the organization and the industry to work on the various policy and which really protect a country as a larger perspective so uh, what are the basic objective of exim policy uh, if you, you talk about the indian indian context so if you see it it, it largely for promoting exports uh, it enhancing uh, the foreign exchange because as the trade balances has to be uh, put in the place because as we know our exports are uh, lower than our imports largely still we have a trade uh, balance gap and it diversifying the exports right and then uh, facilitate market access because uh, we as a a uh, procurement uh, specialist uh, we have to see that where largely the organizations or country having a the various agreements uh, in the larger context uh, within the world scape and from international trade where we are diversifying our import policies right within the organization so these are the uh, basics processes that uh, is also uh, strengthening the infrastructure because if you see uh, the largely the increase on the infrastructure growth uh it supports simplifying those thing a uh, lot of export incentives are being there uh, which we'll see in uh, in the later slides that how uh, this is supporting organization and particularly to the procurement experts to uh, make a trade off between uh, your buying processes of taking decisions uh, on this uh, further it ensures the product quality in standard because we have a larger Uh, standards of quality being maintained, whether it is ISO standards within, or maybe various standards of quality uh, being adhered to. Uh, your lot of uh, R&D processes, R&D processes has to be streamlined on this. Uh, there are lot of uh, support to the agri exports, uh, agricultural exports, and various product line exports and imports policies are being there, which they are. And now, largely, we are talking about the sustainability nowadays a lot on this front. Uh, whether the organization or the countries are basically uh, cut throat with the cut throat competition whether largely we are into the process of uh, this esg process and you one thing is very clear that it has to be on the uh, on the exports or on the global competitiveness because when you are competing with the uh, for your final product within the world level then you have your product has to be a uh, quality centric and that need to result oriented that is where it has to be there uh, trade uh, the tariffs and duties uh, yeah, into the business that has to be a trade off uh, that need to be taken care uh, before taking any decisions so tariffs are, are basically levied by uh, the government based on the various structures looking into the competitions inside inside uh, the, the policies and looking into the outside of things tariff imposed basically uh, uh, looking into the market conditions how it will be uh, your alternative products are available uh, how country uh, local domestics uh, uh, productions uh, can be enhanced largely if you see nowadays the that the tariffs are basically put in considering the uh, small enterprises smes we have a uh, millions of smes uh, within india so considering those smes how the tariffs are being uh, being trade off so that at least your uh, process of uh, duties and structures can be look into it uh, basically tariffs are are also another tool to look into uh, enforcement where nation can focus on the trade partners primarily import and export policies if you see the benefit of the tariffs is basically uh, try to receive the competitive industry in other countries uh, because there are lot of uh, things are happening where uh, anti dumping uh, is happening uh, dumping is happening uh, with uh, to the other countries like we have seen in india uh, dumping is happening for uh, steel products that's what where government has come up with the uh, various policies where currently we are all are suffering with the bis Uh, certifications all are like one of other way we are suffering with this bi bi certification and largely the importers are uh, facing challenges as importers we are facing challenges on the bi as part of it but these are the things which is largely uh, if you see it from the from the country perspective is basically 
to to support the local industry that is where the anti dumping duty comes in and it gives a parity uh, or, or or a level playing field for the for the country and for the organization or for the industry to to work on the faster uh, opportunity for any industry as such if you see the uh, uh, this duty prospective is basically to to enhance the uh, revenue for the for the country that is where largely the import export things comes into the role uh, if you see the impact of tariffs in a global a global perspective it is basically uh, to take a decision on your supply chain strategies uh, meaning that when you are working for a uh, for any organization looking into the prospective of tariffs or importing such a products which are larger volume then basically you have to trade off your import and export based on the various uh, business operation and business decision basis so that is where uh, the tariffs has come to an a role for a procurement experts to take a decisions when uh, there are various schemes are available nowadays uh, it is there since uh, so many years uh, to work upon like if export incentives are uh, are there various uh, uh, on the larger i think 2018 19 and previous to that we have recently the rottep schemes has come up which replaced meis and scis which based on your manufacturing processes or is a reimbursement of your all the taxes whatever you have put in so what does it mean it means that uh, uh, on your exports primarily whatever the input you have put in you are getting a incentive out of it so that is where the rottep schemes has been given by the uh, um, by the government uh, basically if you see in india uh, the rottep schemes are basically giving an incentive of around uh, from 0.5 to 2% whereas uh, various countries because that is a wto uh, uh, managed uh, 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 phenomenon whereas if you see the chinese or counterparts they are in the, their exports they are giving incentives to close to 8 to 9% so that is the inequality happen always so how to tack, tackle those things so there are various other schemes of your larger like if you are putting a plant then if you are going for a, your epcg uh, schemes where you can have uh, your Uh, all the capital goods you can at least get the leverage of the import duties on that so that is where and there are various uh, schemes or various platform through which you can uh, moderate this epcg uh, there are various other schemes are available uh, to promote i think this is as a procurement experts or specialist we should be aware of what are the other benefits are available to us in a domain like advance authorization where it is largely on the export if your products are uh, are ex exported in the other countries then you can take a scheme of getting your your product raw material or maybe spares or other things on advance authorization you can import it without duty and you can avail this facility of advance authorization then you have a various duty drawback schemes where uh, policies are being framed out so that you can have a leverage of Uh, ranging from 0.5 1% to 3% of duty drawback where uh, you will be sustainable on your export products meaning that you there is a leverage to you as a procurement specialist to get the material from imports and get the drawback schemes where you can have a facilitation of this uh, uh, all the activities so if you see it from the uh, uh, there are lot, lot of changes happening because if as a export if you seeing it why these changes are being there from government policies all together because these policies are driven by from world trade organization because it is apex uh, across united nations they are controlling across the world that what are the policies being given by the every government so uh, you you might, might have heard 2 3 years back that meis and scis schemes were in the radar from the wto and that is where the new scheme of rottep has come in india and it is evolved in the like if you see 97 to 2015 your dpp schemes were there then epcg scheme came in 2014 15 and of lot of things now latest is the rottep scheme which is came in 2021 onwards replacing scis and meis so these are the various schemes government also give it to all of us to work on this policies to see that our procurements are sustainable and we are supporting the organization with this scheme so as a procurement specialist 
we should be aware of what are the schemes are available because till now what ha what is happening this domain knowledge is only with the like export and import or compliance people it is not with the procurement specialist and as a procurement specialist you should be aware of this policies which is available for a benefit of you to take a decision for any import and import of the material from various countries and that is where we need to work upon on this all facilities there are various trade agreements are being signed between the countries for facilitation of import and export so if you see the trade agreements i think recently 2022 uh, uh, trade agreements were signed uh, between india and uae and then india and australia and before we have asean and various other trade agreements are there so these trade agreements are there for focal point of the uh, for the product which are largely being uh, extra or maybe uh, excessive being produced within the country like if you see from australia and india australia is basically largely producing like dairy products and other things and india prospective you see the spices and other things are there so there are various products are available which you can leverage on the fta fta meaning uh, in free trade agreement we have a uh, duty structure ranging from zero to some percentage during the year of between zero to ten years so you can leverage those imports on on this product like if i'll give example of my own industry we have leverage uh, from india uae or india australia this trade agreement of products which were ranging from 7.5 percent to 12 percent of the duties to zero percent now so you can see the advantages of our buying proportions so as a procurement specialist you should be aware of which are the products are available in which country and how you can diversify your supplier base many a times what happened we we don't realize that okay we just see the uh, the basic cost of pricing we don't calculate the landed prices so we need to understand the complete stru structure of the pricing which majorly like it, it talks about including this structure of this tariff duties uh, strategies to how we can mitigate the uh, you know optimizing sourcing decisions uh, through the trade uh, benefits is basically uh, on the three part we need to look into tariff impact assessment for every product of your import or any decisions you are taking for imports we need to do a proper assessment of your product on landed prices how you are locally you are procuring and in case of imports what what is the benefit it is giving on on this your supplier diversification will happen with this structure because you will be looking across the world across the country from where your product can be can be bought into country so uh, largely it will support your exports based, uh, for the organization and the trade compliance and advocacy trade compliance is basically to support uh, in this with the pre-trade agreements and with the various policies uh, through which we can we can support uh, on this compliance so these are the three parameter which i thought it will be a concluding part through which we can uh, in a decision making process in the procurement uh, we can definitely take a, a decisions based on this i think what is, this is what i had uh, thank you for listening if you have any question you can raise now or we can discuss during the day thank you thank you very much Thank you so much sir for joining us and giving your presentation and I request please be with us for another moment and I request Mr. Ravindra Sharma, Director Solution Val Value Advisor SAP, please join us and present a small token of appreciation on behalf of the entire team as they have managed to get time from their schedule and uh, give us their uh, precious presentation along with their time today here. Thank you for joining and here is a small uh, token of appreciation on behalf of the entire team.